actress for these people. Okay, because this would be a mo- you know modern. Correct, and and I kind of picked Ben Daniels for it. Now Ben Daniels was in like Rogue One. He was okay. on, um, God, he was on the. Uh, he's one of the priests on the new Exorcist TV show. Um, he's been on so many different things, and he does very, very, very good um, roles that are really small. And I think he could lead an ensemble cast pretty well. The way I looked at it, because I was like, of, of course, at first I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to put Mads Mikkelsen in this, and I'm going to do mm-hmm. all of this, right? I'm like, these guys don't fit. Right. They really don't. You know, Mads could probably be one of the bad guys or something like that, because he's always really cool. Um, and then I was even thinking about Alexander Skarsgård being in it, too, which I have him for the uh, kind of like the next in line. And this guy's name would be Jack Thoreau. Um, he'd be from Florida. Um, and, you know, again... Those two actors right there together, it's kind of almost. I think they would fit really well. Yeah, I see and where you're going. in kind of like an ensemble type of a deal. They'd mm-hmm, be absolutely. pretty good leaders for it, you know. And then, um, then I have a guy from Colorado named Vincent Washington, um, and this guy is Alex Pettifer. I, yeah, I kind of he's on number four or something like that. He um, was in a movie called I, I, I Am Number, am number four, four. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that he would be a kind of a good contemporary for it, too, for everybody that's in there. And I've been kind of going back in the last, like, ten years of movies, just sure. kind of seeing who's not really huge, huge, but could does a really good job yeah. at what they do. Then I have Charlie Phillips from D.C. Um, and I looked at that, and, of course, I wanted to have a little bit of diversity and everything. And this is um, played by Winston Duke. Um, he was oh, yeah, um, he's in Black Panther. Black Panther. He's been in, a, yeah, he's been in a lot of different things, and he's a big, imposing kind of a guy, right? You know, in both of those roles, he did really well. I mean, he had a in us, he had a bigger part, yeah. You know, and then in Black Panther, he was he was just really good in that Baku. part, yeah. Um, and then this is this is kind of like my my um, X Factor one. This guy's name is Morris Christian. Um, he's from West Virginia. So again, you you p- kind of put right. these people in these in these towns with these names, and they kind of fit where where, where they go. And this wow. would be Josh West Hartnett. Oh. Okay, I would put Josh Hartnett in something because of what he did with Penny Dreadful. Yeah, and c- plus, I mean, he's not oversaturated in a lot of the roles no, that he does, not. and he does a really good job at what he does. Yeah, I feel know? like he was about to be. Yeah, yeah, he was like about to be that guy, and then and he kind of peeled he back. Just, yeah. And that, which was really cool, because yeah. in that Penny Dreadful, he was a pretty badass character in right. that one. Um, and then I have um, the last guy. His name is Calvin Pinkerton. He would be from Illinois. You know, I was kind of thinking of that Pinkerton name and then the serial killer kind of connotation with right. it. You know, almost. But I think Army Hammer would be pretty awesome at that. Oh, kind of almost Hammer. crazy. But Army Hammer's a fucking huge yeah. dude. He's like six seven or he's some shit like he that. He was gonna play Batman. Yeah, he's he a was. huge solid dude. You know, I, I think that he would be a really cool character too. Now you put all those guys in GI Joe uniforms. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Sure. And like he's they're actually fighting, and you can kind of show. I, I don't think you would really show a lot of flashback, but they'd have pictures of them in their offices or wherever they're working. You know, maybe a little bit of flashback on certain characters on certain parts that they have. You know, um, some audio, audio flashbacks. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For those of you that are listening in Illinois, it's still Illinois. Yeah. It, oh, uh, yeah. I said Illinois. Come on. Mm-hmm. Feel the yeah. Illinois. <laughs> um, but uh, I really, I, I really um, kind of fleshed out the characters enough to where they basically all. Again, like I said, go back home after the war at certain times. Like, of course, uh, Ben Daniels goes back first. You know, he's he has a really awesome career in the military and everything like that. Becomes this drill sergeant and then decides that I'm quitting. He goes home to take care of his parents, but then he ends up, they end up passing away, and then he ends up in L.A., and then he becomes, he quickly kind of goes up through the ranks. But then he starts seeing all these cases that are getting kind of put in boxes. All this shit's happening, and something kind of hits close, you know, to him where he actually has to do something about it. And he's like, why isn't anybody doing like, like doing be- this stuff? Like he befriends someone who gets killed or something? Not necessarily, but he, but it, it's more of a... Yeah, like, I don't think it has to be that close of a tie. Like, yeah. where he well, wait, him. is he working yeah. in a police department? Yeah, he's he was like, maybe like someone comes in and, and was like, "Why didn't you?" F- like, he overhears a lady saying, "Why yeah, didn't you save my son?" Or something. correct. It's like, why right. aren't you guys doing anything about this? I, I and it's the same person that comes in every day, right. you know. And so, he, I mean, he does a really good job at his job. So, he, I mean, he decides, you know what? 
he starts seeing this stuff. And then the other characters slowly, too, that's how they get introduced into it, too, because in each one of their departments or something like that, they all do really great. They're all highly decorated officers at some point. You know what I mean? Not, like, highly decorated, but they, I mean, they're not just kind of, like, arbitrary uh, patrolmen. You know what I mean? Right. So they start seeing these cases that go basically just sit there, and they everything's spinning, and that's what kind of draws everybody together. So, like, the first two guys, like, say, Ben Daniels and Alexander Skarsgård get together, and they actually go towards a case, and then that's how somebody else in another department notices that case. There's a similarity to it, you know, because right. I haven't really fleshed out ha- as... But they're all working in different districts and stuff? Different district, saying? different departments. You know, uh, a couple of them were at the Sheriff's Department. A couple of them were with Precinct 9 or some shit like that, you know. But they all somehow find each other on one case, which is a bigger case than anything. And it kind of almost would lead to like a Hollywood type of a deal. So you would think that 70s Hollywood was always really, I don't know, it was it was very manly at that point, yeah. you know what I mean? So there has to be something. A lot of mustaches. Correct. <laughs> so it's just like it's mustacheville, you know what I mean? So there has to be like some big bad in that part of it that's pulling the strings of everything. Sure, some S- some producer. You producer. Know, like I mean, if you look at the Harvey Weinstein stuff. Maybe, yeah, maybe he's like a porno producer. Well, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't go to that. I'd go to like big budget, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, like, like a Harvey Weinstein. Ass. Yeah, like, he, like he's friends with all the big directors of the time, and you can you could kind of throw in those real things. And they too, have like too. maybe like... Like an old boys club kind of yes kind that's, of a deal where they have their hush hush yeah it's, like maybe um, like sex j- trafficking. Just throw, well, I was just getting ready to throw that out there. Like they keep finding these dead girls, young girls, something like that. Yeah, to, or and young, young boys, and yeah. young Filipino boys. Yeah, and yeah. Like, just a lot of there's a lot of death and a lot of robberies and weird shit. Movies aren't getting financed, but all, all of a sudden they they allude to the trade papers where it's like, oh, this movie wasn't going to get made, but then now it, it is. All of a sudden it's financed. Yeah, right, and right. then at the same time it's kind of showing, you know, how these people are looking at all these weird cases that are showing up. People are washing up Maybe. on shore, you yeah. know, just That'd weird cool. stuff. And Maybe they're buying up buildings and burning them down for insurance money. No, that's the crow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's something else. Um, My bad. Can I have one of those? Maybe the bad guy looks like a toad, too. No. Thank you. Um, but <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm going to shoot that one down all the way. He has He's a mustache. Gotta, he has to have a mustache and be a big manly man. <laughs> yes. Well, it'd have to be a really big mustachio dude. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and, um, so you have this big bad that kind of is above everything, but they're trying to go take him down, which I think you'd have to do it in, in maybe two to three different movies, you know, to kind of introduce the main characters all together. And then the three kind of take everything down. If you could get that far, but as a one movie, you could really do it in two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, but you would really have that whole, I don't know, that mentality, the search and destroy kind of mentality. It's like, we got to go in there, we got to do it. This is where I kind of want to mix in something from another movie, Tango and Cash, which is weird too, because that's, that's kind of, it's, it's kind of weird because they all need almost like a quartermaster, right? So basically what what I see um, like the main character Ben Daniels doing is he goes to his department head or like the chief or something like that. It's like I need to I, I need to do something about this. You know, I, I really feel that this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, so he says, OK, you know what? You can put together your own squad. You need to put together who you want. And then that's how they kind of because they've kind of they seen, actually... e- seen each other on different cases. So they, they get together. And they're basically like this guy, and then that's where I think you could show some of their their background in the military, right. uh, you know, whoever they were with. A couple of them are Marines. A couple of them, uh, of them are Army guys. Not really any Navy dudes, unless they were SEALs or something like that, you know. Right. Um, a couple of Air Force dudes. So you would almost really have the full gamut of everything. And it, I know it sounds a lot like GI Joe, <laughs> in a <laughs> and, way, and Gangster Squad. Yeah, um, yeah, kind of, you know, yeah, in, yeah. in in a little ways like that. But I really think that if you – and you did it in that 80s action style. Right. You do it in that that California, uh, you know, almost Miami style, coastal Who city. would you have direct this? This is – that was a hard one for me because um, I – of course, I looked at all the directors that I like. I was like, oh, man, this would be a Nicholas Winding Wren movie. Nope. John Carpenter? John Carpenter. Nope. You know, I looked at all my loves first and just like, oh, man, I love these dudes and it would be awesome. But I like Joe Carnahan. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. I like Joe Carnahan in his action style, and I think that he could handle the pace of the movie to to give it the 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 time to build, but then also deliver on the action. Um, one of my you know newest um, really kind of favorite movies is the A Team. Yeah, everybody hates that movie, but <laughs> I don't hate it. Don't hate it. Yeah, it's a, not. It's not like yeah. uh, cinema gold, but yeah, it's I, it's, it's fun. I, li- I like that style, that tone, where it's kind of like. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's the same way with like uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. It's like a, it's like a. There's like a film over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of grainy. Well, I, I it's like an action kinda... movie where things can happen, where it's like not, you know. Yeah, and it would be rooted in like real life scenario action type stuff, almost not over the top like Cobra, right? Because Cobra would be the antithesis of all of this stuff like that. He's right. the guy that comes in and is just like fuck everybody. I'm I'm the badass. You know what right. I mean? These guys are more about getting the job done they have everything that they want right wait so would you cast Stallone? no 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 you not this be one. a younger version it would be a younger version and i'll tell you who i have for him you could later just on. cgi his face on some other no i'm just kidding you, well, you could um but i already have somebody for him too um but then i kind of looked at um the director of photography for this too because i wanted that big i do want the cinema right. scope you know what i mean almost i want that big where so many things are going on in the screen at once that you have to watch it more than once just to really kind of see what's going on. Sure. But the main, and I want scenes to where it's a person on the left-hand side looking at everything on the, the right hand where there's hardly anything, like a sunrise or a sunset. You, kinda, you almost have the feel, I don't know, of like a Brian De Palma type of a deal. You know what I mean? Kind of that that yeah. that kind of feel for it, you know? Sure. Um, and just that the really kind of vibrant colors, but the grain... Um, on them, so it, it really does. So it feels like that '80s action, '80s movie action sure. movie. Yeah, you know, I mean, the big explosions. I wouldn't really throw in a lot of the <clears throat> one-liners or anything because it would be so stupid. And but have somebody say a one-liner. You have to yeah. every now and again, you know. But have somebody say a one-liner and somebody else be like, "What the fuck was that?" Yeah, there you, <laughs> yeah. Go. Yeah. There you go. Why would you do that shit? I'm Why sure would the you say that? Would naturally come up with some. Yeah, shit. yeah. It, it, I mean, it would be pretty cool. Um, and then for 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 the DOP. I really like the look of Mandy. I like the scope of Mandy. Okay. And I thought that guy would be really good. Or um, the guy that, um, well, the guy that did Man- Mandy was, his name is uh, Benjamin Loeb, I think. Um, yeah, Benjamin Loeb. Or I would have Newton Thomas Sigel uh, from Drive. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. again, that's kind of uh, one of those thriller kind of uh, movies. And it had, just the colors and the way that he frames everything is just beautiful on that. Now, of course, I think the producer for this and I think the writer would be Alex Garland. Okay. I would kind of put him in there, um, which would be pretty cool. But then I, for the music, because I think music has a lot to do with the movies too. And honestly, I would really almost put uh, Cody Carpenter and John Carpenter, oh, you know nice. what I mean, together to do nice. something in that kind of synth. They would love it. That synth dark yeah, synth, you know what crazy. I mean? And it would give it that 80s feel. Yeah, it would kind of give you that. But you think know, about yeah. that, a Joe Carnahan movie written by Alex Garland. That'd be crazy. That's why I kind of like put it together. I was like, man, that would who? how would they do that together? Right. But it'd be really cool. If, um, I... J- the Joe Carnahan dude, I mean, really does some cool movies. I mean, and he's more that action oriented, which he could really fit with that style. You know, he grew up with all of these movies too and wanted to make them. There you go. You know, and you just have that that really cool, more contemporary style with the older vibe, Absolutely. almost. You know, and and again, I don't really have the story fleshed out for it, but I would really like to see them all kind of come together. In kind of a deal, and at the very end of it, I would introduce Marion Cobretti, you know, because um, I would put who played um, his son in Rocky Balboa. Oh no! <laughs> yes, <laughs> only because Milo Ventimiglia. Yes, only yeah. because, only because he looks a lot like him. You know, okay. you rip okay. him up like a Julian Julian salad. I mean, he would look really yeah, close. I'm to with him. you. I'm I mean, with you. you really would. And he's not a bad actor. I think he's oh, in no. a new TV show or something like that. Yeah, but I think it would be really cool to kind of have that throw in there to it. Wasn't he on that This Is Us? He was on Heroes. Well, Heroes, of course. And then now he's in the doggy race car driving movie. Yeah, with yeah. Kevin Costner. Costner yeah. 
<laughs> which you spoke of yes. on a previous podcast. Yeah, on a previous philosophical podcast. dog. <laughs> yes. I can uh, think about Kevin Costner's thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and at that point, he would he would be kind of the wet behind the ears kind of a guy coming in at the very end. Here's our newest edition. You know, this guy, just he just got back from, he just retired from 